Hey guys, it is me, Kisame Unlimited, and today is Thursday where I tackle my own personal videos. If you would like to see more videos like these, don't forget to like the video. 400 likes would be the goal. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about a subject that I am very, very passionate about, and that is collecting in Yu-Gi-Oh! I've talked about it before where I was like, oh, you know, this is how to collect in Yu-Gi-Oh! But I feel like I've grown a lot in these past few years, especially with my collection. And I plan on doing another Top 25 Rarest Cards at one point. But in the meantime, I said, you know what, you might as well talk about collecting again, give a lot of people pointers, because I feel like a D I've inspired a few people to start off collecting, and they have a nice collection. Now, when it comes to getting something that you want, have it be a game or a car or anything, you see, regardless of whatever happens, you will put money towards it. I'm not going to teach you how to save money because you should already know how to save money. Investing in Yu-Gi-Oh! is a hard thing. You see, Yu-Gi-Oh! stock market is difficult to understand because a lot of cards are hot in the moment, but they could easily die down, reprints. A lot of things could affect Yu-Gi-Oh! card prices. You see, for me, growing up in this game, I, you know, liked my share of things, but certain things would get reprinted and certain things would, like, lose value. If someone's really old from this channel, they will remember how I used to be with Exodia heads. I collected so many Exodia heads for no reason, and then in the end, you know, Exodia kept getting reprinted and reprinted, and, you know, I always said, you know, Exodia's head was always about 10 bucks, so just keep stacking up on that, because regardless, Exodia will always be worth something. No. I mean, the pieces I have aren't worth nothing, but they definitely did not go up like I expected them to, but the one thing I've learned in Yu-Gi-Oh! is that you could never go wrong with a prize card. A prize card is always going to be that. A prize card. It will always retain value and go up in value. A prime example of it was Legendary Dragon of White. When Legendary Dragon of White came out, I paid $450 for it. It's over three grand now. I mean, I have two people selling it on eBay right now. One person wants three something and the other one wants eight something. It's not saying that that's worth it, but it definitely shot up in value the later it got because it was still a prize card and i think the best thing in Yu-Gi-Oh is prize cards because like if you see prize cards and say to yourself i would love to have that card or i would like to be known as that kind of collector in my personal opinion there are four big collections in Yu-Gi-Oh: the match winners the YCSs, the Shonen Jumps, and I guess the Ultra Rare Tournament Pack cards. Those, in my opinion, are the four biggest collections in my eyes. And I would love to be the first Yu-Gi-Oh! player on YouTube to say I had all four sets completed. I have dabbled in all four of those sets, and I have accumulated cards individually from all those sets. The only set that I could say that I have done completely is the World Championship set. However, in my eyes, I still feel like it's incomplete until I get an original match winner. But the one thing I would like to describe is this. Some, like some people might say, I like this set, but that card in this set is so much money, I just can't see myself getting it. Fuck that. You see, originally for me, I feel like one thing that always held me back as a Yu-Gi-Oh! player was that mentality, that mindset. The best thing to do is hit the biggest fucking roadblock first. Because if you knock out the biggest one, everything else is easy. That's how I was with Stardust Divinity. I saw Stardust Divinity and saw a card that was one fucking grand. And I was like, how the fuck am I going to do this? And you know what? I said, fuck it, Anthony. You don't have the money, but you can pay it off, bite the fucking bullet, and everything else will seem fucking easy. And it fucking was. It has to be done like that. Because if you go after the little things first and then try to hit it hard, it's much tougher. If you hit the fucking ground fucking running and you hit the biggest mother effer, like a good example is for me, I, it's hard to ballpark the YCSs because the YCSs is all like, unless they're reprinted, you know, but I'm going to use Blood Mathis for an example. Let's just say you want Blood Mathis. You know, there's other ones cheaper than Blood Mephist. You could, let's just say, go after the Dark Lords, or you can go after uh, Giant Hand, or any of the others. I mean, Blood Mephist is one of the more expensive ones. But let's just say you really wanted Blood Mephist. You get Blood Mephist first, and then everything else seems easier. And the best part about it is it's a smart investment. I paid 250 for Blood Mephist. 
Bug Mathis is 500 now. It's it's not a bad investment. And I am the type of person where I love holding a piece of Yu-Gi-Oh! history. I've said that in previous videos because the way I look at it is I'm a full-fledged Yu-Gi-Oh! player. There's everything I like about it. I like making videos about it. I like the meta. I like the casual. I like collecting. I like the show. I've been around this game for a long time. So for me, I appreciate many sides of Yu-Gi-Oh! But regardless if you're looking to make money out of it, or to just be like me and just be sentimental, or just have it for bragging rights, you know, it's one of those things where it all starts with a purchase. Chimera was my purchase. I paid 40 bucks for Chimera, I think 45, and little by little, I just love the feeling of holding something vintage in this game, something that I knew was always going to hold value. Chimera was a prime example. I paid 50 bucks for Chimera. Chimera right now goes for 300. Shit adds up in this game. I mean, regardless of whatever you like, it's all a matter of preference. What I might find valuable in this game or a prize card that I might be into might not be what you're into, but there are definitely a lot of things in this game to collect if interested. And anything fucking retired from God knows when, limited in print, will always retain value. I still would like to have the original sealed started at Kaiba and Yugi. I have Kaiba, but I don't have Yugi yet, but it's all like a matter of preference. Like, I don't have all the YCSs, but I would like to. If I ever wanted to, let's just say, label myself as a real big YCS collector, I would buy an Ultra. Like, I've seen, like, I think recently, like, a Giant Hand Ultra that's on eBay for, like, two grand. I'm like, I could probably buy it, but there are certain other things that are captivating my time that I want more than that. But basically what I'm trying to say is I'm going to basically be tackling a lot of rare cards in the future. And because I'm going to be tackling rare cards, I kind of really want to take this moment to give my insight to collecting and to advise people that if you're going to collect anything in Yu-Gi-Oh, I always feel like it's smart to go with them because there is no downside to doing it except it hitting your fucking savings hard. But if you're going to do it for something stupid or if you want to do it, I th well, I don't want to say stupid, but if you're going to try to invest in anything and you really love Yu-Gi-Oh, if you really love Yu-Gi-Oh as a hobby and would love to showcase something, I feel like you can't go any nicer than a prize card. But you know what it is? The main point that I want to get out of this is if you're ever going to start going after prize cards, the best thing to do is target one that you think is the nicest, baddest one to get that gives you complete fucking bragging rights get that one first. Get the biggest heavy hitter. Everything will get easier from there. And the last thing is, it's a smart investment. I'm a prime example of it. I wouldn't invest money in these cards if I felt like I was just throwing my money down the shitter. I, I, I really mean that. So for me, it's like, if you want something that holds, you know, a place in your heart, you know, it's vintage, it's a rare piece to have, will never be a bad investment. And on top of that, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun to not go off like a set and be like, I got this, I got that. And I got, this. you know, I got all these rare cards. I just think it's fun for someone like myself, maybe not you, but I just wanted to give this as, you know, cause I hate it whenever I upload a rare card edition or I have someone be like, Oh, I would love to have something like that. I would love to have a collection like that. No, fuck that. You could do it. You could have a really nice collection. I work two part-time jobs, making minimum wage. I'm not a fucking Rockefeller. I'm not fucking anybody special, but I am a dedicated player. And I am very... Uh, when I want something, I get it. So that's all I could say. So I'm just saying, if someone like me could do it, I feel like a lot of people can. So don't ever say you can't, because... It takes one shot. You bite the bullet. You get one. One turns into a few. Have that sexified card in your collection. So yeah. If anything, comment below. The last thing I want from you guys is to comment below rare cards that you would love to own. Comment them. And maybe you would inspire me to find a card that I didn't even know was rare. And maybe I'll tackle it. So yeah. So maybe I'll cut you off. Now, go like the video if you haven't. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Ring the bell. And I'll see you guys later on Saturday with Spidey.
Have a great day. Better tomorrow. Bye.